Hey guys, what's up? It's Joey Suki again. I just wanted to let you know that recently we've launched a new online course on the Artist Coaching website, which is called the DIY Artist Bootcamp. This training, this online training is all created for the DIY artist who needs to do everything by himself and who wants to know more about music promotion, music marketing, branding, networking, goal setting, or how to create content. It's actually created for the, for the artist who releases his own music, but doesn't really know what to do after he released his song. So if this is something you're interested in, it's a course, it's online on artistcoaching.nl. Feel free, feel free to check it out and let me know what you think. I think it's really valuable to all those DIY artists. Welcome, Koch. Thank to everyone you, uh, who's listening, I'm here with a special guest today. Uh, a guest who most people probably don't know. They know someone else, but they m- might not know you. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually really honored to be here because we're sitting in a room where I have been eight years ago, ten years ago, uh, when I was here working with your son. And today I wanted to invite you to, as a guest in the podcast, to talk about the parent perspective because I still remember you read my book when I was here. One of the things that I remember very vividly was that we were making music and you came up with a plate of, uh, yeah, worstbrot, sausage bread. (laughs) And um, yeah, to me that was kind of special because it reminded me how my parents were as well. I was making music upstairs and my mother supported us with food and beverages and all those things. Um, And I just thought it was interesting to invite a parent because it's pretty special uh, to see your son growing up as a, a successful artist and that impacts the whole family. It do- doesn't only impact him, it impacts everyone. Absolutely. And how I'm just really curious to hear and to share your story with other parents because if there's anyone else listening who has a kid who's doing well um, or is talented or whatever, how can they deal best with those situations? How did you deal with it? Um, were there some things you might have done differently, looking back? Those kind of things. So, um, Koch, uh, could you please start with a short introduction of who you are? I'll do, uh, Joey. Um, as I said, my name is uh, Koch. I am, uh, I'm a father of uh, uh, Robert, uh, better known as, uh, as Hartwell. Um, and uh, as, a, as a parent, uh, we already uh, support Robert for more than 18 years professionally because mm. uh, he started to, to become a professional DJ and producer when he was 14. And, and which moment was um, the moment where you decided now it's professionally? The moment the first contract uh, okay. came in. Record deal. A record deal. Okay. Uh, in 2002, uh, when Robert was 14 years old, mm-hmm. uh, and as a parent, uh, I found it my responsibility to look in that uh, contract. Mm-hmm. In my business life, I was used to deal with uh, contracts, not as a, as, a, as as a lawyer. I always needed a lawyer mm-hmm. uh, for me to uh, find out uh, the details uh, of uh, of mm-hmm. the contracts. Uh, so when the first uh, contract came in, uh, I found it my pers- uh, responsibility to look into it, mm. uh, and uh, I asked a specialist in the music industry to yeah. give me feedback on the on the contract, and that's how it started. How how was that for you? Because I still remember when I got my first deal and I showed it to my parents. First of all, it was in English. So my parents immediately were like, okay. <laughs> it was in English. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, yeah. okay. And how does this work? And I see percentages and I see uh, dollar amounts and I see you're signing exclusively and blah, blah, blah. How was that for you? Because I still remember that my parents said like, I really have no idea what this means. You have to let someone else check this. Yeah. Well, as said, I, I was used to read uh, mm-hmm. uh, contracts in, uh, in English. 
Um, I don't bother about the figures. Mm -hmm. It's purely for me the content, mm. uh, all the uh, obligations and, and, and the rights that are <coughs> mentioned in the contract. Mm -hmm. That was for me uh, important to, uh, to understand. So um, that's why I needed some legal advice. Yeah. Uh, mm. And about the uh, percentages, well, I really didn't know. Yeah. I really didn't know uh, whether it was good or bad. Yeah. Uh, in general, I knew that the music industry was an industry <laughs> with with some kind of uh, vague reputation. Yeah. Um, but looking at the uh, at the amounts, I thought, well, that's. For a 14-year-old kid, hmm. it's a certain amount that is uh, that is that yeah. is good for him. Yeah. Looking at the work he is doing, because it shouldn't be work at all at that time, because school was fir came first. Oh, yeah, of course, 14. Yeah. Um, so the amounts hmm. really didn't interest me. It was more about the rights and what are you actually signing away aside exactly. from the money. Like? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Um, so we made some changes. Um, not about the figures, not about the person percentages, mm -hmm. but more in the conditions. Um, and I found out that it was pretty easy to come to an uh, agreement and an understanding hmm. uh, based on the comments I made on the uh, on, on on the contract. Hmm. Um, I found that normal at okay. that time. Hmm. Uh, it proved that the counterpart was ready to uh, to invest yeah. and adapt the contract uh, more artist friendly. Okay, so because that's that's he was fourteen, so that's sixteen years ago. Eighteen years ago. Eighteen years ago, yeah. There was a whole different time, of course, in the music industry with yeah. CDs and with, those, yeah, 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 investments. Yeah, yeah. Because right now most labels hard copy CDs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a different time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but the 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 person that you looked up for the like the music lawyer, I <laughs> I still remember going to uh, to a, a lawyer, a regular lawyer. I showed him the contract, the first contract, and he said to me like you seriously need to look someone up with experience from this industry because everything that I can get from this contract doesn't add up. Yeah. So I said like, what do you mean doesn't add up? It's like, if this was a regular business deal, I would not sign it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. why? Yeah, because there's so many loose ends and so many yeah. this and that. Correct, and, correct. Um, for me personally, that, that, was, that was something I had to get used to. That yeah. everything was so vague and so loose, yeah. and how yeah. much are you actually going to make? What are you actually signing away? Uh, you have all those different kind of companies like Bumasteremra and uh, royalties, and yeah. one big mess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. I so how? So absolutely mm -hmm. agree with you. Um, Did you educate yourself on that? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, mm. yeah. I'm just I'm just a person that wants to know everything. Okay, well, so I yeah. read a lot. Yeah, I read a lot. So that's also what I start doing uh, mm. from the beginning, and purely uh, because I found out it was my responsibility yeah. as a as as a parent. And Robert, as a kid, was just passionate and ambitious. Yeah, uh, and he had a lot of fun in making music. Yeah. Um, and and I, I and we thought that it was uh, important that he could continue to enjoy what he was doing, yeah. and not getting involved in all the the, the business and yeah. financial uh, struggling uh, that yeah. comes along with it. And how? Um, because there there has been some kind of talent, of course. But when did you notice the first time, like, hmm, there might be something here, or? Oh wow. That's 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 difficult. But um, as soon as Robert started touring mm -hmm. as a DJ, mm -hmm. uh, and you see other DJs uh, playing, mm -hmm. um, within within a year, he already became a kind of 
famous between yeah. brackets uh, in, 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 in the Netherlands because he was the new kid on the block yeah. and also very uh, well known and experienced DJs mm -hmm. came especially to clubs to see the young kids mm. uh, behind the decks um, and in the first year he was touring with, with Chucky who mm -hmm. already had that uh, experience and is a, is a very talented and gifted uh, uh, DJ so he was a, a very quick learner mm -hmm. um, and soon within one or two years uh, professional DJs uh, well known within the, in the Netherlands said to us well he, he can become a very big one okay so kind of when the the market confirmed it like hey this is someone we yeah. should watch or yeah. the tracks were starting to yeah perform. he was the one to watch yeah, exactly. yeah yeah that was the moment for you where you said okay we might have something here let's stay have a closer watch <laughs> yeah 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 but when he was 16 mm -hmm. we knew that uh, there was a lot of interest mm -hmm. to him. So the number of bookings uh, uh, grew uh, steadily in, in, the, in, in the years that followed that. And yeah. uh, there was always, uh, wherever he came, there was always the request to come back. Hmm. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good yeah. thing. Um, but most important for us was that for Robert, it came kind of natural. Yeah. He enjoyed it, he had a lot of fun, hmm. uh, he found his way between the other DJs. As uh, a young kid. As a young kid, yeah. yeah. It's a different uh, world. He was uh, very ambitious in learning both DJ skills, uh, but also production skills. Mm -hmm. uh, he was always busy with, with music. Yeah. Um, he always tried to learn from others, mm -hmm. uh, but never copied it, always did it uh, in his own way. Yeah. And uh, that was for us the most important thing. He simply enjoyed it, yeah. had a lot of fun. And how did it impact your life and your wife's life um, when he started touring that much? Because I think it's in the documentary that you also went with him to the shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had to. We had to. Yeah, he's legally not allowed in the club. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so till his 16, he was not allowed uh, to uh, DJ after 12. Oh, okay. So before 12, it was before okay. Before 12, <laughs> it was okay. But he always uh, needed. Uh, uh, the guidance of his parents mm. or family and not uh, uh, guidance from uh, a commercial person involved like a manager or so mm. there was no manager involved at all at the time um, so we had to go with him every weekend and when he started as, as a 14 year it was just uh, one or two weekends a month when he was 16 it was every weekend yeah. uh, and he were, when he was 17 it was uh, yeah three four bookings per yeah. weekend that's uh, a big so that asked a lot of uh, yeah. was, uh, so our private life uh, yeah. was definitely uh, affected by that it's a big investment it's, a, it's yeah. yeah we never Seen, we've never seen it as an, an in investment or mm -hmm. an obligation because uh, we also uh, enjoyed uh, uh, the music and <laughs> from uh, our perspective as long as he enjoyed it it was okay and I think it's a beautiful thing to see your son like enjoying and you're seeing all the crowd reacting yeah 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 so absolutely being proud and it was actually from from the beginning uh, yeah yeah mm. so we we've, we've seen him him growing uh and that was uh, absolutely fun to see yeah. yeah and how did school came in that whole story because he was 14 he was still uh, obligated to go to school um i still remember he went to the rock academy as well 
in mm-hmm. one year. When he, uh, yeah, when he was 18, he uh, subscribed for the uh, for the Rock Academy, mm-hmm. and that's quite a uh, a serious uh, path you have to go through before uh, yeah. you get uh, the uh, confir- confirmation yeah. that you're in in uh, in the Rock Academy. So uh, uh, besides uh, a, a lot of uh, education, uh, you have to uh, prove your ed- education level. You also have to make uh, your demos yeah. uh, uh, supported by uh, by videos. Mm-hmm. Um, that was for Robert at that time no problem at all, because mm-hmm. he already uh, had released a lot of tracks when mm-hmm. he was uh, 18. Uh, there were video clips made at that time. He got a lot of support from the music industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when he uh, he delivered uh, his uh, his demos, uh, it, wa- it had more uh, quality than the majority of the other subscribers. Yeah. Uh, so we uh, he simply walked through that whole process, yeah. uh, and then he started uh, uh, at the Rock, Ad- Rock Academy. Uh, but also there, within a, uh, a few months, actually, uh, uh, it became clear that actually he was too good. Yeah, too far ahead. Too, f- too yeah. far ahead. Um, there were teachers he was already working with <laughs> professionally <laughs> yeah. on, uh, on, on production. Yeah. So he got the advice from, uh, from school. Uh, to leave the yeah. Rock Academy and to go to the studio himself, start working and start working on yeah. uh, and and uh, and and uh, release uh, as much as possible. And that whole process, um, like making the decision to go to a school like the Rock Academy or finishing his uh, primary school, no, yeah, secondary, sec- sec- secondary yeah. school. Um, was that something? Was that the decision he made for himself, or yeah. did, did you guys? No, we never, we never decided okay. for it. Okay. Never. Yeah. No. Okay. He always takes his own decisions. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just the way um, that he wanted to go to, mm-hmm. uh, because he could learn there. Yeah, he could uh, cooperate uh, with um, other people in the music industry that were uh, that had the same passion and an yeah. ambition uh, so a lot of uh, people that are still in the business mm-hmm. uh, he learned uh, uh, he met at, uh, at the Rocket Academy mm-hmm. like uh, Frankie Rizzardo uh, yeah, same year headhunters yeah. but yeah. also singer songwriters uh, mm-hmm. where he's still working with mm-hmm. so now in, in that perspective it was a very successful uh, <laughs> Half year uh, <laughs> at, the, yeah. at the Rock Academy. It's a good good year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the Rock Academy yeah. as well. For the Rock Academy as well, yeah. because he uh, he was part of a very talented uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, class. Yeah, yeah, if you have a look, Frank Rizzardo is doing really well. Hatton is doing really well. Yeah, Cresip was at the same. Was no, Cresip was before. Before. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, nice. but also yeah, Lisa Lois. Oh, was that the same year? Yeah, it was the same year. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's a good good year. It was a good year. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And then he decided to quit school and go all in on his music. Yeah, yeah. Um, and did you still had your full time job at that moment? Or yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was full time full time working. Yeah, for your own like your own job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah my own job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And somewhere along the way, um, you made the decision or. Robert made the decision, I don't know, <laughs> uh, that you were going to do more work for him as in, uh, or at least s- assist him with some, some things. Well, that, that, that went more or less naturally, mm-hmm. yeah, because I, I worked at that time in the, in the financial industry, mm-hmm. so I found it my responsibility to do the business part of, uh, of, of, of Robert, mm-hmm. uh, so that he Purely uh, was able to focus on on production and DJing, yeah. um, but you, you you start with it and you don't know where it ends. <laughs> yeah. 
uh, so the business wise uh, Robert as an artist was also growing and it all became bigger and bigger mm-hmm. um, so yeah from uh, one hour a week it became five hours a week and became ten hours a week yeah. um, but I found it all yeah, very natural yeah. and I said where to stop where to stop yeah. is it something you could recommend an, another parent like um, because you're closely working with your son some people might think that's not uh, a good thing some people say it's the best thing because you have the best relationship yeah the strongest relationship you can ever imagine yeah would you look now looking back on the whole story would you say i would advise everyone to do it no 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 absolutely not um, you simply have to do what you can do yeah uh, we never pushed him mm-hmm. he makes his own decisions so as soon as there uh, needs to be taken a decision, uh, whether it's business-wise, whether it's commercial-wise, whether it's uh, artist-wise, it's his decision. Yeah. Uh, I can agree, I can't, uh, or I cannot agree with it, hmm. but it's his decision. Yeah. And even if I do not agree with it, if I can help him, I help him. Hmm. But every parent uh, should purely watch to uh, the boy or the girl uh, and see as long as he enjoyed it, he has, she or he has a lot of fun with it, mm-hmm. that's okay. And mm-hmm. support him where you can support him. I was able to support him on the financial and business mm-hmm. uh, areas, uh, but other way support him in, 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 in different ways, uh, yeah. doesn't really matter. As long as you support him and never push him. As long as you're there as a parent. Yeah, you should mind. be there. Yeah. yeah. And there are also very difficult times uh, mm-hmm. that uh, that comes along. I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. And with the, um, the partners, like eventually uh, he needed a booker, he needed a manager. Um, was that something you, you helped him with? As in uh, you went in with him into those conversations or was it something you completely left with him or... Uh, only uh, if he asked us okay, to yeah. do so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, he st- he start working with a manager um, only, I believe, in two thousand, beginning of two thousand eleven or so. Hmm. Yeah, so by and by. After when it when it really yeah. became an, an international business, yeah, yeah, not for the bookings uh, in 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 Holland, and he did, he also did international bookings uh, in 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 uh, during the holidays mm-hmm. uh, in in Spain and in Greece, uh, but when it really became big internationally. Mm-hmm. Uh, when there was a lot of interest from all over the world, then we start to work with a manager. Okay. And you left that whole process with him as in uh, he could decide who it was or... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, well late, later on, uh, when uh, the first booking agency uh, went uh, and, 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 and the record label went uh, bankrupt, mm-hmm. uh, he asked me to join him and we spoke with several agencies because um, two he more than one mm-hmm. uh, and he could purely focus on the person and i on the con- and i i was focusing on the content yeah uh, but still he made his own decision uh, and uh, he is he's working with an agency and, and as a manager for more or for uh, for 12 years already mm. Uh, I wasn't part of that conversation. Wasn't? No, I okay. wasn't. Because yeah. uh, I noticed that you already made more or less that uh, decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, okay. yeah, I wasn't part of that first conversation. <laughs> I already knew. Uh, I, I worked in Amsterdam and he was uh, joining me due, uh, on, on the ride to Amsterdam. He had that agreement with, uh, with uh, Anna. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, I dropped them uh, at the front door of an <laughs> agency, and I yeah. I knew already. Okay, when it's going uh, to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He will uh, he will choose uh, for uh, for Anna. Uh, and which uh, were there any moments where you, as parents, were sitting at home and really felt like this is going to be like it's tougher or maybe even a bit scared or whatever or um, have there been some moments and could you yeah of course of course yeah but looking back it all went very natural mm. yeah it's been a long process yeah yeah definitely, yeah? yeah so uh, s- starting at 2002 and the first appearance in the GG Mac top 100 in 2011 that's that's nine years, nine years. Nine years. yeah yeah, then you have the opportunity mm. to grow to a certain uh, level and uh, and mm. reputation. But I remember the first time we had to go to an uh, international uh, an international booking. Um, we saw him leaving uh, in the, at the airport uh, to take uh, the plane all by himself. Without Six, two sixteen manager. years old, yeah. no two manager. Just uh, and we were just, yeah, uh, scared. Yeah, sure. Uh, how will he re- received? Yeah, how will the booking go? How's the club? How are the persons there? Yeah, yeah? Uh, you know. Will everything work out? Properly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, he yeah. safe? Yeah, is he safe? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, because you never know where you're yeah. where you're ending up. Yeah, At and least, look, uh, yeah. The, the the cheapest flight you can uh, <laughs> get yeah. yeah low budget because uh, uh, the fee at that time was just a few euros yeah yeah maybe just expenses <laughs> yeah more, uh, expenses. more yeah oh yeah at that time there were also uh, bookings internationally that uh, that just cost a lot of money mm. as an investment yeah it's it's a learning yeah he could learn yeah yeah when he started uh, when he got the opportunity to uh, uh, tour with uh, with Chesto in North America a Canadian college to, uh, a Canadian tour and a US college uh, tour mm-hmm. for three weeks oh, that cost a lot of money mm. that cost a lot of money but he learned so much yeah uh, there in the, in those three weeks the, those three weeks were more important from a learning perspective yeah. than the 10 years before and is that something you um, advised him in as well? As, as because I can imagine that from a younger age, if I have a look at myself, uh, and I could get an opportunity like that, but it will cost me a lot of money. I would think, who should I do it? We never looked at the money. No, exactly. But because I can imagine that a parent with more experience and older, you know, like more life experience in general, is in a better place to say, don't think about the money, think about the experiences. Yeah, but from a younger perspective, most people just think about the money. They don't think about the long-term experience you get from it. No, it's about why should I go? It it costs me I don't know ten thousand dollars. Why should I go? Uh, yeah. Is that something you guided him in him at him in as well? Well, uh, he made a choice uh, to do it because mm-hmm. he really uh, saw it as an opportunity. Okay, yeah, for different for for many reasons. Yeah. yeah? To work with Chesto was an honor. Yeah. To, and to be asked by Chesto yeah. uh, to go touring with him for more than three weeks, yeah. that was, yeah, was yeah, beyond expectations at, at that time. It was yeah. definitely a dream. Uh, he also had the uh, opportunity to learn in great shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not just for for an, an audience that he was used to play for a, t- a few thousand people in 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 the club yeah. or in a smaller festival, but now it were the big halls arenas. in North America, yeah. in the arenas yeah. for six thousand, for ten thousand, for fifteen thousand people, yeah. um, with a very professional show with sound design, with visuals, laser. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's something else. To, to see what two management does, to see what the manager does, because yeah. he, he was really uh, unknown with that. Um, so that was that was for him important. 
not the money and we never discussed the money part of it we okay. knew that it would cost a lot of money but so be it exactly. yeah? yeah so be it and i'm wondering like is there anything you would tell a parent right now like maybe it's it's something uh, you could give it advice or something you can share from your own experiences um, what could help a parent with a kid who is talented or maybe already has some form of success um, is there something they just maybe a simple thing they could be uh, on the lookout for or the, the, the most important thing is um, fun hmm. You simply uh, should enjoy what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, you should learn by what he is doing, uh, and watch the moment very carefully when you see that's not happening anymore. That the learning stops, so yeah. the development stops, or that the fun uh, comes along with stress, mm -hmm. and then you you should ask yourself. Okay, what's what's causing the stress? What is causing the problems? Uh, does it fit with his character? Yeah. Yeah. Does it fit with his goals? Um, that's uh, that's important. Yeah. So don't try to force yeah. uh, things and and, uh, and and development. It should come from the kid, from uh, from the boy or the girl uh, itself. Yeah. I 100% agree, <laughs> as in it, it happened with me as well. Like when I when I lost uh, the fun in in it all, my parents said the same thing. Like they came to me and said, like you're you, you're not smiling anymore. As in, you're only complaining when you have to go to the airport, or you're only complaining when you have to do this or that. So why are you still doing this? Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a really great tip. Like watch your kid closely. Yeah. Uh, and maybe ask questions as well. Yeah, communicate. Yeah, stay in contact. Yeah, yeah stay in contact. And the money shouldn't play yeah. any role. Yeah, it's a cliche, but it's true. Shouldn't play any role. Yeah. Still, uh, uh, Robert stopped touring more than a year ago. Mm -hmm. But during all these years, Robert never knew what he was earning at a at a booking, yeah. at a gig, never. He's not interested in it, because uh, then you should ask yourself, okay, if I get five for a booking, mm -hmm. should I play less than when I get ten? Yeah, exactly. The audience, the people, the yeah. fans deserve your 100% yeah. every time, whether it's for five, for ten, or for 15, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. So we mm -hmm. simply don't want to know. Yeah. Because then it might go working in your in your mind and affect your performance. Yeah. Well, I think you guys, from my perspective, I think you did a great job in um, in everything, like guiding him as as a kid, but also as a, as an artist and um, finding the balance between those two things. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, We've had a nice conversation with a lot of yeah, thank you. information thank you. and yeah, insights, thank you as well, Joey. which might be really helpful for other parents I listening. Hope, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And I want to thank you for taking time to do this because uh, it's special for me to be here again and to have this talk. This special room for you. <laughs> yeah, but not that, not that, you know, like uh, a lot has happened over the years, not with only me, but also with you and with Robert. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's beautiful to see that we're ending up here and kind of the whole circle yeah. is round again. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I want to thank you. Oh, you're yeah. welcome. Thank you. Hey everyone, what's up? It's me, Joey Suki, and thanks for listening to this podcast episode. I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe on this podcast on iTunes or just share it with your friends who you think it could be valuable to. So thanks again for listening and see you next time.